Hi, I'm Sal McCaglano, Associate Professor of History at Campbell University, a former Merchant Mariner and an adjunct instructor in Maritime Industry Policy at the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy. And welcome to this episode of What's Going On With Shipping. These boxes are getting expensive edition. These boxes are getting expensive. Can't be clear. This is the story I was thinking about doing last week, and it has gotten worse. Uh, it's going to cost a heck of a lot more to buy goods here because the price to move containers across the world's oceans has just taken off to insane proportions. And by insane proportions, I mean insane proportions. Let's take a look at some of the stories that are out here and, and give you the context here. So this is a story of G Captain. Shipping fury as container freights container freight rates soar. And this is what you see here. Short-term freight rates from China to Northern Europe have breached the $20,000 per 40-foot mark. So over $20,000 to move a 40-foot container. While Trans-Pacific carriers are quoting rates up to $25,000 to the West Coast. And there's one report of $32,000 from Shanghai to Los Angeles. Understand, it was, you know, 5,000 to move containers across. Low, you know, at times in, in, in you know, 2,000. Uh, this has just gone nuts. Uh, goes on here to talk about the Lodestar has several quotes from top five carriers of 21,000 per 40 foot for July shipments from Chinese ports to Felix Stowe and Southampton with the average around 18,000. This is the story out of Splash 24 seven box rates up 332% year on year schedule reliability hits dire new lows. So not only, okay, this is even better. Not only are you paying through the nose to get your, cargo shipped the reliability is going downhill because people are being bumped because literally carriers are making deals and if they can make more money your box is getting bumped goes on here this is a story uh from uh, sam chambers i think it goes on here in the first five months of 2021 401 vessels arrive rivals on the trans-pacific and 144 on asia europe were over 14 days late according to data from Sea Intelligence. Putting these numbers in perspective, the combined 2012 to 2020 total of such late vessels was 388 on the Trans-Pacific, so we, we've already topped that across eight years in one year, and 69 on Asia Europe, so we're double what it normally happened. In the past few months, schedule reliability has been largely consistent, albeit on an extremely low level of 35 to 40%, compared to a long-term average of around 75%. Going down here uh, to this thing, uh, let's see. Uh, Soren Toft, the CEO of Mediterranean Shipping, uh, who used to be at Maersk, by the way, speaking last week in an interview during the World Ports Conference said, I realized from a service reliability issue, we must do better. Really? <laughs> I want to show you a site. This is, this is container news. Uh, I'm sure you are all on this every day like I am. I mean, I mean who doesn't go to containernews.com uh, and look at it? But again, you know, hi. Uh, I don't want to open any of these stories. I just want you to see the theme of these stories going on. This is in the freight news. Habal Gloyd says fresh Asia rates from July. CMCGM applies congestion surcharge in Oakland. Uh, MSC sets new charges to Antwerp and Valencia. So you're getting a theme here, right? The, the new surcharges, new costs right here. And what gets me about this is not just that story. As we scroll down here, this is an endless stream of stories. This is way back into the end of May. Let's go over here. And right here, we see the same thing. This is uh, May stories talking about, again, this run. This is just continually increasing. We're seeing this, this exponential increase here in the cost of rates to get cargo across. This Understand what this means is if it costs more for shippers to get their cargo across, they're going to transfer that cost to you, to me, to consumers everywhere. And now it's going to become more expensive to, to buy goods. And what you start talking about here is that dreaded word inflation, where things start costing more. So let's go over this story. This is another uh, story. This is from uh, American Shipper. More container ships score astronomical $100,000 day rates. $100,000 for a day rate. Uh, for a vessel, uh, an insane amount of money. Again, we talked about one that was uh, up here. I think I got the story here somewhere. I think I pulled it up here for you. Uh, where was it? I think we pulled it up here with, with a, I don't have it up here, but it was that $135,000 rate 
for a ship. I, I mean, these charter rates are just through the roof. If you happen to have a container ship right now sitting in your backyard and you're not using it, you should really see about offering it up. Uh, I've got a boat. I think I could squeeze maybe one container barely on it. I, I maybe will get a good ch uh, charter rate for that. I'm not sure. But this is what you're seeing, this bonanza for short-term shipping. Uh, this is the what they're talking about. Here it is. The 15-year-old 5,000 TEU S Santiago was charged for $135,000 uh, per day for 45 to 90 days. 45 to 90 days, $135,000 a day. That's pretty good. You're going to make some money right there. And what you're seeing here is uh, a lot of these shipping companies are just making money right now. And understand, there's an interesting little subset in here. I don't think it's in this story I wanted to show you too, but I think it's in this one here. Uh, here it is. Uh, here's that story. Container ship score off the charts. That's $135,000 a day. But if you scroll down in this story, they talk about here what are called NOOs, non-operating owners. So these, I've talked about the big companies. I've talked about the big 10 that control 85% from Maersk to Zim. Uh, but under the surface of them are what call NOOs. Now, NOOs operate ships. They basically, the best comparison I give you to them is U-Haul, Ryder, uh, Enterprise, the people who rent you cars. Uh, they basically rent vessels uh, to shipping companies. And so you'll see these companies right here listed as NOOs right here. So you've got Customair, uh, Danios, uh, C-SPAN, uh, Global Ship Lease, Navios, Euro Seas, Capital Products, MPC Containers. These are all, matter of fact, C-SPAN just uh, made a huge deal to buy a whole batch of new ships. Uh, C-SPAN is one of these companies. Sometimes you'll see the vessels named C-SPAN. And so you look for them as an operator and they're not an operator. They're, they're not specifically, they're operating under the guise of others. Sometimes their vessels are leased long-term to, to companies and they're renamed. Uh, so you may see them with Maersk or CGM or, or, or one of these other companies' uh, names on them. They'll repaint them, rename them. So it looks like they're, they're in their fleet. They are making tons of money right now. Uh, if you had invested in Danos and in these NOOs, man, right now the charter rates are through the roof. They cannot get vessels fast enough right now to get out there. And so this means, again, this, this has to do with the increased demand in the United States, in Europe, for goods from overseas. Uh, we're seeing that because of stimulus checks. We're seeing that because people are not going to work. Uh, people actually have more money because many people are working from home. They don't have that travel that they initially had. They couldn't travel anywhere either for vacations. Now, that's going to change, obviously. We're going to start seeing uh, that, that morph a little bit. But right now, Man, they're making some monies right here. And, you know, this story, again, builds on this from this is a, a Greg Miller story from American Shipping there. Why stratospheric con uh, container rates could rocket even higher. Uh, we're talking about this going into 2022 uh, is what some of these companies are talking about. And you're just seeing these freight rates just go up again. Here you're seeing uh, uh, rates uh, from China to uh, across the Pacific right here. And you get to see these graphics here that they do right here. This is an older story. I've showed this story before. But one of the things we're seeing here is this increase of, of freight rates. But more, more importantly, shipping companies, the, the carriers are providing these unique services where they're telling people, listen, if you pay extra, we can get your cargo on there. So people are paying rates above normal with surcharges, with different levels, and they're still getting bumped. Still getting bumped because, again, the cargo is out there. There was a story. Uh, uh, let me pull it up here for you. This is a story in G Captain uh, a couple of days ago. Matson, uh, Matson is a Jones Act carrier. In other words, Matson operates American flag vessels, American built ships, in the coastal trade of the United States. Specifically, Matson operates between the United States West Coast and Hawaii. Uh, Matson operates smaller vessels. Uh, they're not operating the big, huge mammoth vessels. Their vessels are two to three thousand TUs, but they don't need to be huge because they're just servicing the Hawaiian Islands. Uh, One point. 3 million people on the Hawaiian Islands, 900,000 on Oahu, the other 0.4 uh, million spread around. And one of the things that Matson's been able to do just amazingly is number one, because they're smaller vessels and being an American, they can hop into ports quick. They can get into the West Coast ports, offload, jump the line. Uh, more importantly, they don't need a full day in port to offload like these big mo monster vessels. And what they're doing is they're providing extremely reliable service right now between Hawaii, the West Coast, and Matson actually has chartered some vessels to go to China, bring it back and get the stuff delivered. So they're 
booming in the business right now. And they just announced a buyback of 3 million shares and they're raising their dividends. So you don't see this in Jones Act carriers too often. Uh, but here you're seeing a Jones Act carrier just absolutely making money because again, the entire market is making money. Everybody's making money right now. I'm not going to be surprised to see Matson think about investing in some vessels. We may see uh, contracts come out of Matson for some new vessels down the road, start putting that money down to lock in on building some vessels. They just did a big vessel replacement plan, but with everything going on, uh, may want to get some vessels. They may buy some vessels from overseas actually for their uh, Trans-Pacific route. Uh, be interested to see if uh, Matson goes into that route. A whole story here on that. And then finally, the last thing here is, is at a splash 24-7, Drury's World Container Index experienced its steepest climb ever. So Drury's is the one that, that looks at this. There's several measurements for following this. But this is, is, again, one of those things. And you see this right here. Let's look at the story. Published yesterday, saw its steepest climb since its inception in 2012. The composite rose a further 15.9% or $1,104 to reach over $8,000 per FEU as a 40-foot equivalence, which is 332% higher. That is, understand, 8000 per FEU, that is all containers uh, around the world. Then they started looking at here from Shanghai to Los Angeles, increased by more than a third in the space a week from 6,300 to 8,500, even though I told you 20,000 was the number, that's because of those surcharges that are being leveled on there. Rates from Asia to the East Coast are over 11,000. And again, we're, we're seeing that spike happen in shipping right now. And, and again, it has to do with demand. It has to do with demand. The good thing is Yanatan, the, the uh, Chinese port that had slowed down is back open again, but that's just opening a floodgate now for vessels. There are ships lined up outside of Southeast uh, China right now, trying to get on the docks. They're filling up. They're heading across to the United States, to North America, to Europe. And what we're seeing again is this whole system keep going. Again, we still got the issue with empty containers not being a uh, uh, sufficient number of empty containers being sent. We've got those situation with U.S. exports piling up on the docks. Again, the Federal Maritime Commission is in their heart of their investigation, and you know they found out there's a problem, but they're not doing anything about it yet. Uh, and what this means is, I ran a story, I think it was a month or two ago, talking about get your Christmas shopping in now, do it. I'm telling you right now, this is going to be an issue. This is going to get worse before it gets better. We're just seeing it across the board right now. And again, we're, we're one of the things we're going to see is, is these rates increase. It's going to get more expensive. So on that chipper, happy news on a, on a Monday morning, uh, thought I'd share this with you. Get back in. It was a little uh, deficient getting videos out for you. Apologize about that. But we're back up. And matter of fact, I got a great story on the hopper for you coming up in the next day or two uh, that I think, I think you'll enjoy. So this is Sal signing off. Uh, again, if you enjoy these videos, you enjoy uh, this type of material, hey, Subscribe to the channel, hit the thumbs up so that you like it and it'll be shared on YouTube among other people. Also, be sure to hit the bell so you, when new videos come out, you'll be alerted about them. And feel free to share on social media. So this is Sal signing off.